all the men came around, remember that? And they all laid hands on him and they spoke into his life. And silently, we've been watching him on Facebook doing his little, you know, his thing. And um, and he just recently, he, he didn't see, this is, this, let me just, can I say something to you real quick? We'll cut that live off real quick. <laughs> okay. let, me, let me say something to you, okay? When you give a testimony, you gave your testimony, and we all enjoy the testimony. Yeah. 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 But when you talk about having to give your clothes away, and when God has, has stripped you, and, and he's changing the way you walk and the way you talk and your surroundings, that's that testimony that we're looking for. Because there's a lot of people in here right now going through the same yeah. thing you are going through. Matter of fact, they have even going through, they haven't even went through it yet, but you are plowing the field and setting the pace to let them know that if God can do it for you, yeah. That he will do it for them. I was waiting to hear about how the shoes, how he had to. Oh, okay. I, yeah. Yes. Hold on, hold on. We <laughs> are reminded because it's so easy to turn the clock at. Give us. Yeah. Hey, hang on. Because he. Yeah. Hang on, hang on. Give us. We want the, the, the undignified. Yeah. We want that David kind of testimony. Yeah. You are. But still, we want that, that David. Because you got some David. Place. You got some Gideons in this house. Yeah. You know, you got some rough, rugged ones in. Don't get it twisted. When it took a minute for us to get like this. You understand what I'm saying? We ain't got no high rise for you, homeboy, right now. But look what, listen, tell you something. It's right here. This the power is right here. Amen? Amen. Come on now. Hey, I'm, I'm sorry. They, they, and you know, when you, when, you okay. said, when you said that they, each time that you went back, they upped the voltage. Yeah. Because God is giving you more power. Yeah. He's, yeah. he's increasing your yeah. faith. He's increasing. Yeah. Everything is increasing. And when you yeah. told me about the high rise, I said you can be taking you from down here to the top. Amen. 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 Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And that, that's, that's powerful because, man, in, in ministry and where God's taking you, He's going to take you to these places so high. I was in downtown Houston and I was at one of those high rises and I, I, I was telling these ex big executives, there was 80 executives in this room and they were trying to get them to see what we do in ministry. And, and, and I was like, man, you, I'm usually down here with the lowly. Now I'm up here. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But see, the same testimony I gave them up there is the same <laughs> testimony I'm giving you down here. Nothing's changed. There's so much to say in this testimony. Let me tell you something. Is it started when I was crying on that on that wreck yard? But there's some growing. See, I use my Facebook and Instagram because when I wanted to change, I looked for YouTube, I looked for everywhere, and I said, Where is a guy that has timed his 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 growth in Christ? Because see, some people were telling me things that I couldn't understand because I was a baby. And then sometimes it just wasn't my time spiritually. Come on. And so now when people say, well, I say, hold on, brother. Yeah. I'm a baby in Christ. <laughs> you know? There's things that, and, that, and there's a time for it. But right now, and you know what? Because I humble myself to say I'm a baby in Christ, yeah. that's a hard thing to do. Say you're an infant in this thing and you don't know nothing. Because I've only been doing it 15 months. These guys have been doing it 20, 30 years. Amen. Come on. And, so, and so during this growth process, I went through times of, of let, let's just be real. You're facing these charges. Your mentors, your spiritual leaders are saying, this is not time for a female. You know how hard that is. Yeah. The only, the only thing I've ever known is never having a godly relationship. So all I knew was home run. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. And so I don't even know how to be in a relationship. And so it always, that was my struggle. Come on. See, I, I, he said, I'm going to take the drugs and alcohol, but I'm going to still need to work on, on this area. Amen. Because I, that's that thorn in the side. Yes. You see what I'm saying? And so during this time, I was like, wow. Okay, God, I had to fall two, three times. Fall flat on my face. I had to have so many lonely nights, and it's not easy when you're going home and you're watching your mentors and your leaders, and they have families out there. And you're like, why can't I have that family, God? And he's like, it's not your time. That's right. It's not your time. And so during this whole time, I had 
I had earrings on and I had chains and I had the tattoos on my head. But see, there was a time where every tattoo on my body that represented Houston, that represented that life, I had to let go of and I covered them up. I had to come because I said, I trust you guys so much that that was an a open door for me to go back to the streets. Yes. See, a lot of people were like, nah, leave it there. It's a testimony for God. Nah, it's an open door for the enemy. How That's an open door for him. And I can't allow him to be in my life like that. Hallelujah. And the people that need to see, man, you sacrifice everything from your past to put on the line for God. How powerful is that? And during this process, I, when I looked at the tattoos, and I, I meet with the mayor anti-gang office downtown Houston. Mm -hmm. And he told me, he said, hey, man, you, you look just like who you're trying to minister to. Mm -hmm. I don't know which is which. Mm -hmm. And I was like, wow. Here I am with the ripped jeans, the, the, the fly clothes, a piece of chain, some earrings in. I can't go out the house with this stuff because it was an idol to me. Yes. You know, I would take a thousand selfies on Facebook because I wanted to, to validate when I feel bad. There's a lot of us that, that take selfies because we need to hear that from God, but we want to hear it from people. Yeah. Yeah. See, what we need, we, we don't ask for it because we want it out here. And so he said, I went back and, and the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, man, sell all your clothes. Come on. Sell all your Air Forces. Sell everything. Come on, God. I said, all right, God. He said, I'm going to provide the finances to take care of this stuff and and I, I, I even donated some, and I was getting, I was getting hammered because not everybody's going to understand your testimony and your growth. Amen. And so there was some on social media that, oh, just give it all away. But God was like, no, because I'm fixing to bless you through this because I want people to see that you're willing to sacrifice and and and, and not ask for a handout, but willing to put everything on the line for it. And so in these in these growth moments, that anybody that's been watching my social media page can say. How did he get here like this? There you go. How did he get here? There you it wasn't go. overnight. And I'm still growing. Yeah. Because guess what? One, one, one guy just told me, one of my mentors just texted me and said, he said, stay humble. Amen. Because God will exalt you. That's right. Amen. Stay with the lowly. Because see, when you testify, when I walk out to this car, and guess what? I'm getting hit by the enemy. Mm -hmm. Just this morning, somebody, a female, was like, hey, I had a dream about you. Oh, and I was like, hold on, hold on. What, what, what is this dream, right? I said, well, let me understand. And she's like, no, it's not for you to worry about. But that was just the enemy opening a door yes. that I almost fed into. Yes. Because guess what? But, but the Holy Spirit's working through me. Yeah. See, I'm working progress. I'm not saying I want to be perfect, but I'm saying I'm, I, I, I walk by that word. Hallelujah. And when I and when I need to be held accountable, they hold me accountable. Amen. See, my testimony, I do this for 10 minutes. 12 minutes at the most, I try to. And guess where I have to do the other 95% of this testimony? I have to do it outside these walls. Yes. So when I get right out there, everything I'm saying to you is what I got to live by. That's right, man. Amen, amen. So I just wanted to share that with y'all. Thank y'all so much. May God be all of you. And then we're going to turn it over to the woman of God so that she can introduce the man of God. But I um, just want to say something really quick. When I said about being naked and transparent, it's two different things. And I want you to take that with you, too, when you give your testimony. Because I gave you a nugget before what God had told me. I never told anybody else. You remember that I told you? The revelation about love, what God wanted. Amen. Okay, so here's the thing. When you are transparent, Parent, that means that somebody can what see what through you, right? But when you're naked before someone, that means they see every flaw. And the only person that should see you in that manner is God and your mate. Okay? No one should know every ounce or inch of all of your discretions because you can't trust people with the secret thing. That see, that's why. I'm, who was it? Was it Moses? No. Uh, was it Mo Abraham? Who was it that sons got in trouble when they saw him naked? Noah. Noah. You remember when Noah sons saw him in his nakedness? Well, if you do further research, 
actually nakedness meant his wife. Come on, somebody. You better, you better learn that word. There's revelations in the word. So it wasn't so much that his son saw him naked, but they saw his wife and that she was his nakedness. The Bible says that the wife is the nakedness of man. So that means they, they saw his woman and that caused a curse on their life. So that means that you should never let anybody see you naked because that gives them a, uh, an ability to think they got something over you. You can see me transparent. You can see right through me all day long. And that's why I said, man of God, let some people that think that they're high, because even though you may be hanging out in Lodom Bar and telling the people that are in low places that God can do this for you and bring them out back to the king's table, because you sat at the king's table, but every king's table is not a God's table, because I was watching that last little thing you was doing, and I watched, and I looked, and I saw the Holy Spirit on you, but I didn't see it in the whole place, so you can can be a light unto them, the ones that think they got it going on. But really, the power is in you. Because yeah, yeah. you are the church. And yet, this is small beginnings. And even though God is going to allow me and Pastor Rudy to travel and have a large uh, edifice, see, we are the church. This is just an edifice. I don't, we don't care about this. Thank God for the lights. Thank God for the the walls and the floor and all that stuff, but it is the church. We are the church of the living God. And upon this rock, I will build my church, and the gifts of him shall not prevail. Amen? So we thank God for your transition. I'm going to call this beautiful woman of God. I don't actually, I don't know her, but the Bible says you must know those who labor among you. And then I can tell that she has labored because she has a good man. And anytime you have a good man, that means you have a great wife. And he is a very good and humble and kind man. And as a woman of God, it lets me know that she that he is well taken care of at home. And that you don't have to worry about nobody.
I want you to know that because I said yes, the intimidations, the lies of the enemy that have been in my life for so long that you can't do anything like this. I've been broken. Thank you, Jesus. Because I said yes. Because I trust in God and I appreciate you for listening to God and listening and being obedient to the faith. I love you, Pastor, and thank you so much. It's an honor to be here. I love you. Thank you. Thank you. I want to give an honor to you. My pastor, Pastor Juan, uh, he's probably going to see this. I think it's on there or whatever, but um, I want to tell you, Pastor, I love you. I appreciate you sitting underneath you and learning from you. And There's just so many messages that he's preached that's blessed me. He said, Jesus doesn't make... i got to remember this. Jesus doesn't make sense. He makes change. Come on now. And that was a powerful message. And bless me. And it's always stayed with me. There's so many. But Pastor, I thank you. If you're watching, I love you. I appreciate you. I know you're here with me in spirit. God is good. Amen? Amen. 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 So I'm excited. I'm full of joy. I'm full of peace. I'm full of Jesus. Amen? Amen. I'm full of Jesus. And I'm excited. Because I want to tell you, in the last four years I've been learning a teaching, and it's been awesome. It really it set me free in so many different ways. This teaching, and I've learned, I've, I've I've learned through the power of the Spirit and through the teaching of the Holy Ghost. Man, it's just awesome. It, 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 that God is good. God is good. And I've learned about the grace of God. The grace of God. And through the grace of God, you know, religion will teach you that it's all about what you do. You need to do this, you need to do that. It's all about what you do. But grace is about what He's done. Hallelujah! It's all about what He's done for us, not what we do for Him. You know, I'll give you this testimony that I I heard. I have another mentor that I consider a mentor that I listen to quite a bit. And uh, he was saying, he was teaching about grace and and, and the works, the finished works of Christ. And he said this lady came up to him and she she was sick. She had an ailment in her body. And she started telling him, she said, hey, uh, you know, I've I want you to pray for healing for me because, you know, I've I've been doing what, what I've been taught. You know, I've been praying, I've been fasting, I've been reading my Bible, I've been, you know, uh, uh, you know, speaking and doing all these other things. And it just hasn't manifested. I haven't seen anything. And he said, he said, well, you told me. He said, you just told me why you haven't seen anything. And she's like, why? He said, because you're pointing at what you have done for Christ instead of what Christ has done for you. That's awesome. That's awesome. See, this is the thing. This is the thing. In the Old Testament, it was the dispensation of the law. Okay? Under the New Testament, we're under the dispensation of grace. There's a huge difference between the law and the dispensation of the law versus the dispensation of grace. In the Old Testament, it talks about, okay, your obedience, right? What you do enables God to do in your life. What you do first enables God to do second. Amen. In the Old Testament, man, in the Old Testament, man was the root that enabled God to bring his fruit, okay? That's the Old Testament law of theology. That's the way it was. Now I want you to see, when we talk about the Old Testament, when you look at the Old Testament, a lot of people say, well, God was harsh. There was no grace in the Old Testament. He was just chopping folk up, killing folk, what he did, you know, what he, he was he was doing a do, right? Yeah, he was. But when you look, if you really look at the, at the Old Testament, you'll see, you'll see Jesus throughout the whole yes. Old Testament. You'll see God's grace. Because when you look at uh, Cain and Abel, I think it was Cain who slew Abel. Is that right? I'm not going to look at all. But so, when Cain slew Abel, right, he 
he had sin in his life, because you know a lot of people talk about, well, God can't hear you when you got sin in your life. But see, that's not true because when he slew Abel, God was still communing with Cain and he was talking to him. And the same thing with Adam. Adam and Eve, when they, when they sinned, he was still saying, Where are thou, Adam? He was still speaking and communing with Hallelujah. Relationship. Hallelujah. That's grace. Return to me. But Cain said, Lord, if you, you know, if I be a vagabond and out of your presence, you know, people will come and kill me. But God, what did he do? He murdered his brother Abel, but God said, I'm going to put a mark on your forehead. And anybody that messes you, we have to pay back sevenfold. So right there, God blessed the first murderer. The first murderer in the Bible. God blessed him and took care of him. And from the fall of Adam until the time the law was uh, instituted through Moses, there was a 2,500 year span where God was not imputing man's sins against them. That's grace. That's grace. Man, that's awesome. You know what I'm talking to you about? I'm talking to you about the good news. Amen. Is that scripture up there? Can you get that scripture up there? For I am not, this is Paul writing, right? He's in the book of, uh, the book of Romans. And he's writing to the Jews and the Gentiles there. And he's saying, I am not ashamed of the gospel. Because it is the power of God that brings salvation to everyone who believes. First to the Jew, then to the Gentile. So when you look at this here, he says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. And we already know gospel means good news. All right? But when you go back and search it out, you'll find that it means the nearly too good to be true news. That's what the word gospel means because back in Jesus' day, they didn't hardly use that word gospel because it was not nearly too good to be true, too true news until Jesus came, Amen. right? And he started preaching and talking about, it ain't about no more about what you do first, but it's about what he does. Because see, what happened was, when in the old law, in the Old Testament law, it says that God, it says, um, sin was in the world. I need to go back and look at this scripture before I quote it. I need to quote it to you, man. It's, it's beautiful. It's in Romans. Let me look at this scripture. For until the law, sin was in the world, but sin is not imputed when there is no law. So, God was not imputing men's sins against them. He was giving them grace. But when the law came, the law came to hold man accountable to his sin, to put a restraint on sin, right? And the law was there implemented. Man could not keep the law. There was no way, right? God says, you know, because remember in, in Genesis chapter 6 he said that he, he, he regretted that he made man because man was thinking about so many ways to come up with evil yeah. he was just thinking about ways to do wrong and, and just all these things and he grieved God right and he sent the law right to put a restraint on man but that law is like it's it's God's it, God who he is he's so perfect it was way up here and we're way down here see there was nothing wrong with the law the law was perfect in itself, but we're an imperfect people. Yeah. There's no way that we could live up to God's standards. Well, holy God, way up here, right? So, he said, if you do good, then you'll get good. If you do bad, then bad will come to you, right? Mm -hmm. Because now it was all about what you do first enables God to do second, right? So, that man was in there and it and it and it, it kept God from loving man or blessing man the way he really wanted to because why? Because man was not perfect. Yeah. There was no way that man could keep the law perfectly. Right? So God had to remove man out of the way, right? And put himself there. Hallelujah. Come on now. He had to make a covenant with himself. Right? He had to come back and make a covenant with himself because he's the only one that could be fully obedient 
to his own law. Oh, right? So he so he so he took Jesus, because remember, man was the root that enabled God to bring the fruit. That's right. But now that was a dispensation of the law. Now this dispensation of grace is when Jesus came. And God made a law, he already made a covenant with himself because he knew he wouldn't break that law. He knew he'd be perfect. He put himself there. And so that's where you get this, this scripture right here in Romans, what I'm telling you about being obedient to the faith. So you got obedience to the law. If you do, your obedience got the blessing. But if you're, you weren't obedient, then you were underneath the curse. Come on now. If you look at that in Deuteronomy 28, it talks about if you diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord your God and do all that's right in his sight, obey all his commandments, and all these blessings will come upon you. You'll be blessed in the city and blessed in the field. Right? But then it says in verse 15, but if you don't hearken to the Lord, the Lord your God and don't obey all that is in, that is in his sight, if you, it's talking about if you, then all these curses will come upon you. Yes. You know, and the awesome thing about that, in Deuteronomy 28, it lists the blessings, and then it flips around, it looks like a curse. But Galatians 3.13 says that Jesus bore the curse on the cross. And he wiped out the curse on Deuteronomy 28 and took the blessing and left it towards you and me. So all those blessings come through us, through Christ. But it says right here, this is what I'm talking to you about. Okay. By whom we have received grace and apostleship for obedience to the faith among all the nations for his name. Obedience to the faith. Obedience to believe what Jesus has already done for you. Not what you do for him. Obedience to understand that Jesus has now took that place. He's come on the cross. Now Jesus has took the place. Now Jesus is the root. That enables us to bring the fruit. Yes. Jesus, that's why he said, I'm the vine, you are the branch. Yes. Oh. You can't do nothing. Right? But the good news is, we're never apart from him. That's right. Remember, he said in the Hebrews, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. Man, he's good. He's good. The nearly too good to be true news. Amen. Amen. And that's the that's that's what Paul was encountering there in Romans. They were coming in and they were trying to say, it's Jesus and. Jesus and you got to be circumcised. Jesus and you got to hold up these laws. You can't eat blood or blood animals with blood in them. Or you can't eat meats or pork. Or you, they were saying it's Jesus and. Jesus plus. Yeah. Right? But it's Jesus plus zero equals zero. It's not Jesus and. It's just Jesus. And so... What I need to do, see, it, it's the same thing in our day because see, the religious folk, they got mad then. Yeah. You know that, they got mad. The, the, the Pharisees are like, no, and some of the Pharisees got saved, but they were like, no, 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 you got to add to, it's got to be this and Jesus. And we have the same thing in our day today too. Right. But it just comes in different packages. See, the, the church, not all churches, but some will say, it's by grace you've been saved through faith and that not of yourselves, it's a gift of God that's didn't mention boast. So they'll bring you in and they'll say, it's by grace you've been saved, but now that you're saved, now you got to turn around over here and you got to take these 10 classes, you got to read 10, 10, 10, 10, 10 chapters of the Bible a day, you know, you got you to be here, you got to serve, you got to do this, you got to do that, right? They yeah. shift you from grace back into works. Bondage! Hallelujah! Yeah. Right back underneath the law. You better, whoa. Right? So, this is the thing. You know, we talk about all these things that we do for God, right? And we get, we start doing things for God. And I've been guilty of laws. What I'm telling you is, I've been guilty of laws. The Lord has dealt with me these things. My God. But I felt like if I wasn't doing something, if I was like in a standstill in ministry, I would start beating myself over the head. I'd start yeah. feeling bad. Yeah. You know, I'd start feeling condemned. You know, why? Because this is the thing. When you start. It, when it starts all about what you do for God, what happens is, is you get your eyes off the Savior. Come on. And you become your own Savior. Mm. Because you're looking at what you do to get God to do when the truth is God's already done everything you need. Yes. 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 It's already a done deal. Yes. Yes. We're talking about we need to get blessed. Yes. Lord, come prosper me. Lord, come heal me. First yes. Peter 2.24 says, He bore our sins in His body on the tree. That we being dead to sin might live unto God by whose stripes you were healed. Heal. You're already healed in Christ, right? But we're trying to say, Lord, come heal me. Come, 
Come touch me. Come fill me with the truth. Is He's already healed. Done. See, see, this is the thing. God's already done everything come in on. Christ. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why Jesus says it is finished. Yes. That's where we get the understanding and the reality, though, that it, it, it's a done deal. Done deal, God. If I'm not, man, this is, listen to this. If I'm not healed, it's not because God hasn't healed me. It's up to you to manifest that healing. Come yes. on. Yes. You need to take your authority, yes, speak Lord. to the mountain, yes. be thou in you, cast into the sea, and don't doubt in your heart, but believe yes. those things come that you on. say shall come to pass. And Jesus said, you'll have whatsoever sort of things you say. Yeah. 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 When you pray, believe that you have them, believe that you receive them, and you shall have them. Amen. This is what Jesus said. So, I receive its obedience to the faith, it's being obedience to what he's done, right? That it turns around and enables me to do. That's why we're not doing anything for God, we're doing it from God. Amen. We're doing it from the Spirit of God living on the inside. Thank you. When you go back and look at the, the book of Ephesians in the first chapter, it man, it'll make you shout, make you scream, dance, run, flip, head spin, you know, it should. Yes. Because Paul said, We've been blessed. Not we're gonna be, or we might be, or somebody's gotta lay hands on me and bless me. No, he said. We've been blessed with all, with all, with all spiritual blessings yes. in Christ, yes. right? He says we've been blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places, but then he finishes it off and he says, in Christ. So, the question is, where's Christ at? In you and in me. In you and in me. Christ when you go back and look at John, it's awesome because Jesus was already modeling where we were going to be at with him. What did he say? I only do what the Father tells me to do. I only say what the Father tells me to say. Right? Isn't that what Jesus said? And then in there, I think it's in John 14 where he says, me and the Father are going to come make our home in you. So a lot of people emphasize on the Holy Spirit and they emphasize, okay, so this is another one here. They emphasize on the Holy Spirit. And they say you got to talk to the Holy Spirit. But I believe that you can't talk to the Holy Spirit. You can talk to the Holy Spirit. But if you're talking to the Holy Spirit, you're talking to Jesus. And if you're talking to Jesus, you're talking to the Father. And if you're talking to the Father, you're talking to Jesus. And if you're talking to the Father, you're talking to the Holy Spirit. You can't separate those three. There's no way you can separate the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And when you look at it, go look it out in Scripture. It says in Hebrews 10 38, God anointed Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit with the power. For we are not doing good and giving all that the presence of the devil. For God was with him. Hallelujah! That's what I'm talking about, man. The Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit are together and they're always doing the work together. And you know what? They're alive and they're living in me. How about you? How about you? How about you, everybody? They're alive, they're alive and they're living in you. Christ in you. Colossians talks about this is the mystery that has been revealed to the saints. Yes, God. Yes. Christ in you. Yes, the hope of glory. Yes. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. So, God is in us. And this is what we're talking about. Your identity. Your identity. Because, you know, I'm telling you, I told you earlier, but we don't want to add to what Jesus has done. That's right. Right? It's not about our obedience that gets God to do anything. It's our obedience to the faith. I remember there's a scripture, I don't know exactly where it's at, but the, the, the disciples were asking Jesus, what work must we do to do the works of God? And Jesus said, this is the work that you must do. Believe in me. Believe in God. Believe. That's why Jesus said, if you believe, all things are possible to those that believe. What's impossible with man is possible with God. But it comes to a place where I need to believe and so, if I'm not manifesting something that I need from God, because remember, you already have it in this. In this that's why Paul, man. That's why Paul was so different from the from the from the uh, the disciples, because Paul had that revelation. See, Paul didn't hang out with Jesus in his physical body. Amen. Jesus appeared to him, and he showed himself to him in a vision, and then he 
He had all this revelation just 